blurbs and greetings and whatnot. Yeah, I've got a pretty boring looking, very beigey case. Actually, it's more yellow than beige anymore. Yeah, it's just a case. It's kind of uh, unimpressive, but that's cool because that's precisely why I picked this up. Because I've got a, an LGR project in the works where I needed a few drive bays with a specifically yellowed kind of case. It'll make sense when I do the video, but I just picked this up and I guess it's got parts in there too, you know? And some of the parts look kind of interesting. I know there's a Pentium 2 slot 1 in there, so that's something. I don't know what that is. It almost looks like a little infrared receiver. <laughs> Maybe it is. That'd be kind of strange. Uh, it's kind of like too small for a uh, like megahertz display. I don't know. I don't know what that is. A little sleep button. Yeah, no turbo button. So I guess, I don't know what, I don't know what that is. What, what is this? Uh, a little badge we can put here. There uh, was leftover remains of a badge, but I just went ahead and took that off so you can see it's <laughs> not as yellowed there. I put an LGR case badge uh, in there. And then, yeah, the computer itself. There are computer parts, which that's pretty much all we're going to do in this video. I'm not going to do the whole build or anything. And in fact, I don't even know <laughs> if what's in here is worth like restoring or making a build in this case once I'm done with my LGR project, because that's just gonna be a temporary thing that I just needed like the case itself for uh, that. Anyway, oh, okay, yeah, this says something. Pentium 2, 233. So I guess this was like a pre-built system at some point. Yeah, just your generic clone. It's got some crap in there. I see uh, VGA, dial-up modem, ethernet, USB, Sound card of some kind and some rusty PCI bracket covers. And a couple of serial, parallel, PS2, mouse and keyboard. And that's it. And there's no power supply in here. And that's, uh, that's because I already took it out. There was a, a Sparkle power supply in there. Yes, Sparkle power. And it sounded like this. So uh, yeah, I yanked that out of there and <laughs> it just sounds terrible. And uh, not a great quality looking power supply. Anyway, so I, you know, I keep a few of these around just for various projects. They're always handy. 350 watt ATX with 20 and 24 pin connectors. Uh, so in terms of uh, the stuff that's in there, well, you can see there's a crap load of dust. That is just horrible. Um, it's a very dirty machine inside. I mean, you know, it's not the dirtiest, <laughs> but it's caked on there in certain spots. Like there's just, uh, there's some RAM. It's 128 megs of something. Uh, sound card, modem, other crap. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know exactly what's in here yet because I haven't gone through it. And uh, there were no drives. Uh, well, there is the three and a half inch floppy, which is fine. I haven't tested that. I don't think. I don't know. Temporarily connected a CD-ROM to it just to transfer some software over. And apparently the, uh, the seller I got this from did load Windows 90... F uh, man, I already forgot. <laughs> I very briefly looked over what's on here and it, that was a few days ago. Oh man, it's probably about a week ago at this point. So whatever, it's got some crap loaded on there. Ah, let's just see what's on there, I don't know. And in terms of the, uh, the cards, whatever. So we get a PCI. Wow, okay, it's a Sing Labs ET6000 from STB Systems. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, that is just, it's caked on there. Like that's just, yeah, beyond dusty, it's just caked. That's kind of a cool video card though. I don't think I've ever used one of these. What was that, like a two megabyte thing? Yeah, ET6000 PCI. Uh, notice it does have an AGP slot. Probably like a really early one. I think the, is this even screwed on? There's like missing screws and weirdly screwed in things all over the place. Like this hard disk and this floppy drive are just screwed in on one side. <laughs> so there's that lazy approach. I've done that before. And this bottom doesn't look like it's... Yeah, there's supposed to be screws in the back holding it in place. But anyway, they're not there. 
That's fine. So yeah, the RAM, 128 megs. There's two 64 meg sticks of some kind. I don't know if it's PC 100 or 133 or what, but yeah, just NEC memory. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Yeah, yeah, CR 2032, little coin cell battery. That's cool. Some headers for power supply and case fans. Oh, uh, yeah, the AGP. It is an Asus motherboard, so Asus P2L97, revision 2.04. What is that bridge? It's the Intel something or other chipset, PCI set. Seems like a decent board overall for, you know, kind of a somewhat middling slot one thing. It doesn't seem like anything terribly special, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, has a modem card. Yeah, just a little, what was a creative modem card? Interesting, so it's like a little modem blaster, maybe. Yeah, modem blaster, <laughs> tiny letters, DI5652. We even the slots feel dirty. <laughs> it was just one dirty thing. All right, what else is this? What else we got? Ethernet, I guess. Yeah. Three com parallel tasking two. Mm hmm. Fast Etherlink XL PCI. Classic. Now, a lot of these motherboards actually had USB on board or like a header for it even. This one might too, I don't know, I haven't checked, but it does, uh, in the way it's configured here, have an Opti Firelink <laughs> USB card. Uh, so that's a thing, UH275. So yeah, I don't know if there's like a little bracket or a header connection thingy on here somewhere. And the sound card, which I know is a Sound Blaster Live of some kind. Because uh, I saw the, the files for it when I booted it up to test it. Yeah, Sound Blaster Live. Well, there you go. SBO200. Yeah, that's just a Sound Blaster Live. 2002. So that's like one of the later value ones, isn't it? Something like that. I believe it'll do Sound Blaster and AdLib emulation for uh, DOS game support and such under Windows, but I don't know if it'll, uh, if it's got real mode DOS drivers or not. So anyway, I'm most intrigued by this though. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I just like Sting Labs graphics cards. No 3D acceleration in here. It's just a 2D card, but we got the AGP. I mean, can drop a, I don't really care. Like I said, I didn't get this for any of like the stuff that's in it. I uh, just needed, a system with this specific case and the seller accepted my offer on it. So it's like, you know, cool. <laughs> a lot of times I'm more excited about these things, but this one is just so middle of the road. And I have a number of other systems that are along these lines where this just isn't terribly exciting, but it's nice that it all works. So there's that. <laughs> I don't know if you got any ideas of like uh, something cool to do with this kind of a base of a system. Maybe something a little different from my usual fare. Uh, yeah, give me ideas. I don't, know. I don't know. It might be a neat, like, old Linux box or something. Or, like, Windows NT. There's things to do. Yeah. Check it out. So we don't have any negative 5 volt. Uh, but that's fine. Truly don't need it on this era of system. Nothing I'm ever going to put in here is going to be uh, needing that that kind of rail. So, okay, this is one that goes like that. I'll need to find some screws. So we only need 20 pins. There we go. Okay. And, uh, wow, what? <laughs> These have SATA on it? That's different. The other ones that I have don't. Maybe I picked up a slightly different one at some point. Wasn't expecting that. Anyway, yeah, totally don't need that. Wow, yeah, <laughs> what? So we got some different things for like PCI Express. 
Well, anyway, yeah, I was going to say, all we need is hard drive and floppy power. So... Almost too short, but it just barely fits. Or reaches. All right, I'm gonna get this uh, screwed in here and we'll power it on and uh, try a couple things. Things are plugged in, got a mouse and a keyboard and a monitor and a speakers. Yay, power supply works. That'd be really dumb if it didn't. <laughs> Play some pod on here when I get a CD-ROM drive. What the crap? Hardware monitor found an error. Enter power management. Sorry for the flickering. Oh, it checks the voltage. And this new power supply doesn't have negative five volts. <laughs> you know, that's pretty cool. Ah, Windows 98 with the plus pack is what's on here. Yeah, like I said, the, uh, the seller just slapped some stuff on there. <laughs> It's not why I bought it. I don't I don't care what's pre-installed because I'm probably gonna wipe it anyway, but still it's cool that they went to the effort of putting things on there. I was detecting my monitor. Yeah. Good old sound blaster live. So yeah, all I did was just power it on <laughs> real quick last week sometime to uh, just show myself that it's working because I do need something working in this system for the project. Yeah, the modem isn't configured, you know, whoop you do. Everything else is though, so that's good. Sing Labs ET6000. Okay, well, I don't see any DOS compatibility stuff installed, however, I know that it works with DOS games because I tried Duke 3D on here already and, you know, that did a thing. <laughs> oh, McAfee virus scan is installed. Uh -huh. I don't want to just disable it. I want to kill it. Yes, go away. There's all this crap. I don't want this crap on here. This crap out of here. All right. So, yeah. Um... I guess that was part of the plus pack. McAfee virus scan installs with plus 98. So to golf and lose your marbles. You know, I'm <laughs> actually don't think I've ever used the 98 version of plus. I'm familiar with the 95 and XP ones. All right. So there's like comic strip stuff now. <laughs> Some scene Kathy and Doonesbury and Falling Leaves. Mm-hmm. Foxtrot. Wow, this is just a parade through the late 90s here. You got a Garfield theme. Heck yeah, dude. What? Active theme? No, I didn't want that. Maybe it has to download stuff. Is that a web theme? The Kathy one worked. Still got this active desktop stuff, but I just want the desktop. Huh. Garfield desktop wallpaper doesn't work. How irksome. Let's see if the screensaver works. Oh, it does. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this. What the crap? Okay. Wow. Screen savers with sound effects. So it goes. Well, anyway, I'm just going to stick it to the regular stuff. Because I'm boring. Oh, man. Front page express. Oh, that brings back memories. Used to love. Do an HTML. Uh, uh oh. Well, Office 97 appears to be on here, but. Uh, it's just, just not working. 
great. So yeah, like I said, I've already copied over some stuff that I have on one of my DOS game collection CDs just to test some things out. Uh, there's those sound card drivers that I saw when I first set it up. And I thought it was pretty cute. The, uh, they copied over the Windows 98 uh, install files to the hard disk to install it that way, but they uh, left intact their, their dirty, rotten piracy. <laughs> so check this out. We got an info file here. Mm. Windows 98 Second Edition Official Full Retail Final. Cracked in 1999. I guess it's not cracked or whatever. I mean, it's just just a copy of Windows. It's just funny to see that you know, the, the info file still intact there. Oh, there's a serial file too. Ooh. Oh no. So naughty. And I thought the uh, inside of the computer was dirty. Seller was a dirty pirate. But yeah, anyway, games work and they're, they're awesome and stuff. Because it's Pentium too. I mean, come on. You got plenty of uh, oomph for DOS games and things. There you go, you got Sound Blaster support, at least under Windows. Like I said, I haven't tried it in like uh, DOS real mode, restarting in a DOS. General MIDI isn't particularly amazing on the Sound Blaster Live, never has been, but it's there. And we don't have ad-lib emulation at all, apparently. Hmm. Just double check. Now we got nothing. So yeah, we got just general MIDI. <laughs> I'm using. Frame rate! It's ridiculous! It's almost like we have a Pentium 2. Yeah, it's not the worst general MIDI, like like Wave Blaster kind of thing, or you know, wave table, whatever. I don't know what sound set it's using. I've already killed that one. <laughs> it's just force of habit. Really? Die. What? I survived? It must be meant to be. Nope. So anyway, perfectly capable computer for DOS. <laughs> Obviously, late 90s DOS stuff works great on here. Your Quakes and your Carmageddons and your Duke 3Ds. Pretty awesome machine for that. Um, but, like, not anything particularly out there amazing in terms of Windows stuff, especially without a 3D accelerator. Let me make sure. Uh, this is only like a two meg. Yeah, two megabytes. Internal 135 megahertz DAC. Wow. It honestly might be pretty sweet for certain games in software mode if you're into that. <laughs> I find it oddly nostalgic, but you know, that, that's pretty much it. I'm at this point going to continue with my build, which is honestly unrelated to most of what you've seen here. Um, it's just gonna be some drive bay weirdness, but yeah, pretty cool little computer, I suppose. I mean, hey, can't complain. It works. I did not mean to do that. Oh yeah, what was the hard disk? I haven't checked yet. 30 gigs, okay. Don't know what brand it is, but whatever. Spinning rust. You know, I also haven't really tried the sound or the, uh, the PC speaker sound. Because it does have a cone speaker, which I approve of. Oh, hey, yeah, nice sound. Oh, got that jerky motion going on, dang it. Let's try Duke 2 with PC speaker. <laughs> oh, yeah. Memories. 
<laughs> played Duke 2 without a sound card for years. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time since I played this without a sound card. I forgot how daggum loud it was. My mom always got mad at me playing this one. Crap <laughs> playing it, man! So loud. It's because of that, probably. The beeping. I don't blame you, mom, sorry. Like in retrospect, this would drive me nuts too. Stupid kid, shut up! <laughs> Oh yeah, this is obnoxious. Isn't it great? <laughs> oh, that sound too. The Still one of the most satisfying rapid fires in any platformer as far as I'm concerned because of just the way the bullets come out. I don't know. Like they're perfectly spaced and they come out so fast. <laughs> PC speakers make amazing laser sounds, though. Isn't that, like... It's just a great sound. Not that it matters, I'm not gonna get any bonuses. Alright, so... This computer's growing on me. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't help it. Like, I don't know. You start, like, it doesn't really matter what kind of hardware it is. After a certain point, as I was going to say, at the point where I'm at in collecting and just being fortunate enough to have so many systems sent my way, it's like, it's the individual moments like that right there that bring me back to a certain time to take a computer from being, like, boring and, like, who cares, you know, is just another clone from the time period to being like, oh, man, that was a lot of fun because it reminds me of being a kid. I'm, st I'm still, like, what is this? What is this? What is that? I've got to know before we turn this video off. Okay, so I know sleep mode, right? It's put up weird crap on the screen. Uh-oh. Well, anyway. But, but why? It looks like there's, like, a line going from here to here to here and then a line from here to here. Is this like an, an ambient room sensor? Like a light sensor? If anybody knows what that is, let me know. And it just woke back up. Okay. Yeah, don't know what that is. I've never seen this on any other case that I have. Seems to be connected to sleep just because of those little lines. Uh, so yeah. That's it for this PC. Stay tuned, I guess, to regular LGR things, because you will be seeing this again in some form. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, let me stick an LGR case badge on there. Yeah, check them out. New badges. Oh, yeah. Yeah, looking pretty sweet. <laughs> Alright, that's it for this blurb. Thanks for watching. <laughs>